Across Canada, and the statistics show it's one in three children are abused. And so when you look at Kamloops population, you're talking about hundreds and hundreds of kids. If you're looking at the region, you're talking about thousands and thousands of kids um, that are being abused annually. You know, presently we have 133,000 children in Interior Health region, and if we sort of look at the statistics, we're looking anywhere between 44 to 47,000 children being impacted. Um, presently, the regional scan clinic um, that's in place sees approximately 100, 110 children impacted by maltreatment a year, so there's a gap. This gap scales with population, and these traumas directly affect many youth and children who can carry this with them into adulthood. Trauma at this scale affects society at large in multiple negative ways. Trauma can show up in so many different ways. It can show up in um, a child being anxious. It can show up in sleep problems, or it can show up in behavioral concerns at school or at home. It's related to uh, mental health issues, um, substance abuse, homelessness, suicide, um, quitting school, gang violence, it's just correlated with so many things. Um, if the children and youth aren't properly supported from at the very beginning of when they disclose being abused, um, that the outcomes have a higher probability of occurring for kids. You know, if you were to go visit a prison system and interview every single inmate about their trauma history and ask yourself, at what point could this have gone differently? We know that trauma causes terrible health outcomes and terrible antisocial outcomes. Trauma is a huge cost to our society. There are clear ripple effects from child maltreatment and the way in which it's addressed. And our current system is ill-equipped to keep up and stay effective. Right now, when, when a child does disclose, they often are sent to different places. They might be sent to the emergency department, they might be sent to the family physician, they might end up in a walk-in clinic. You roll the dice on whether or not you encounter people who have the expertise that you need to, to walk your case through the system. So that means hoping that the investigator that shows up and takes that call understands how to talk to a child. You know, the interviewing of, of uh, victims is a, is a unique technique all in itself. But when you add in the difficulties around children, um, it raises the, the uniqueness of those interviews quite a bit, uh, recognizing that uh, it is very easy to diminish their credibility or, or completely remove their credibility. Uh, you know, recognizing that children are very suggestible, you know, understanding how questions should be formulated. Hoping that that person files the right report and kicks in the right resources for you. Um, if you get the wrong person who doesn't understand or who doesn't know how to respond to a child, the child's statement is inadmissible and not credible and can't be used in any future proceedings. Um, and myself and my colleagues get calls regularly from Defence Council asking us to, to review an interview that's happened. Um, and, and if it's not done well, unfortunately, it is a useless piece of evidence. When I think of the gaps, it's good to think about how the process starts. So if the child makes the disclosure, we talked about how sometimes we don't know where to send them. So that's a gap. Um, then finally, they do figure, okay, let's come to the scan clinic and now let's interview them. So maybe they've been interviewed already, maybe they haven't been. Um, then I need to sort of find out what that story is. And one of the gaps is, is that sometimes the interview happened a week prior and I'm trying to find out from RCMP what was said and we're spending a lot of time on the phone phoning RCMP trying to get transcripts of the interview um, and so that can be that can be a bit of a stumbling block as well. 
So I think one of the biggest challenges that we, we face with uh, community partners is that we all work for different agencies. We all have different information systems that we access and different protocol around uh, how to access those systems and information that can be shared. One of the challenges that is often talked about with children's experience in the justice system is repeated visits. So this the constant need for checking in, having to go back for a second interview, having to talk to social workers, having to go to a medical visit, um, and, and just the extent of involvement within the system itself can be really overwhelming and sometimes traumatizing for children in and of itself. With the obvious gaps in the current system paving the way for miscommunication, future behavioral problems, and unnecessary trauma, we are in need of a solution, an approach that can effectively address these issues. And we've learned a better way. A way where all the investigating professionals work together under one roof to have a collaborated response to child maltreatment. Where children and their families don't have to travel from building to building to navigate the justice system on their own. At a CYAC, supporting the child or youth is the first priority. CYC stands for Child Youth Advocacy Center. Advocacy centers uh, were designed in the States almost 40 years ago. Um, and the research and the evidence-based practice for this model um, is proven to be the best response to child maltreatment. We went to many international conferences for learning and understood that really was the gold standard and, and, and really an essential service for children. Advocacy centers are operating in over 20 countries worldwide. There's several in Canada that are open or in various stages of development. In the end, we really all believe that children are worthy of and deserve a happy and healthy life. And um, unfortunately, the reality is some children um, don't have the opportunity to just be carefree in children. They have been impacted by either witnessing violence or being part of some form of abuse. And so the model really is an opportunity to um, have an opportunity for early intervention and, and, and to really ensure that we change the trajectory of their lives, that we have an opportunity to change the course regardless of sort of what brought them to us at the first place to really get them on track and back to that life that they really deserve. Biggest impact to resolve whatever's happening in that child's life with the smallest or minimal impact on that child's life with the best opportunity for success for the agencies involved. And, and bringing everybody into one spot puts everybody talking on the same page, gives everybody the opportunity to understand each other, which then creates a warm, welcoming, non-threatening, non-TV show, non-stereotype environment for someone who potentially is going through, really, I would say, the worst possible thing that could be happening to them with the less, least impact of victimizing them again. And that's really what the child advocacy groups are about. I think what they'll provide again is that one person that can help them navigate the whole system, um, you know, so they can make sure that they're hooked up with again counseling services or the community-based victim service program. Um, again, the parents, and that's that one person that will walk them through that whole process and stay with them throughout that whole process. Um, where if they have questions, they are not calling five people to figure out the answer to one question. They can call that one person, and if that one person doesn't know, they know where they can go to get those questions answered for them. A child and youth advocacy center like Big Bear is a solution and a hope for something better. But what really defines a place like this is the heart and spirit of the community that surrounds it. And members of our community are finding their own way to create something unique and be inclusive of all peoples in need. I am helping Big Bear CYAC with um, some uh, carved objects as sort of a sort of signature objects that help the uh, fundraising drive. We we're talking about a bear's head and kind of this uh, style that I do of, you know, it's Big Bear obviously, so they have a beautiful logo with a bear paw and uh, a bear's head. And we've got a couple of preliminary sketches of that done. And, uh, you know, it'll sort of, as things progress, we'll be able to figure out exactly what that looks like. When our steering committee was trying to think of a really good name for our advocacy center. And, and we like the kind of attaching maybe an, an animal to that name. And so there was a few animals that, that we liked thinking of, of advocacy center. And so I, I brought those names 
to different children, all ages, all cultures, all backgrounds. Um, and 100% of them just were drawn to the bear and the meaning of the bear. Um, how bear represents strength, how bear represents standing up. Um, how parents that are supporting kids that are going through this um, often refer themselves as the mama bear or the papa bear. We know that the data has showed that uh, Aboriginal youth are overrepresented in this and uh, you know uh, unfortunately we have a lot of work to do within the system to do this and so part of our work that we can do collectively is what are the strengths that we bring together, what are the resources that each organization has and how can we create sort of a cohesive team to wrap around uh, the youth and so knowing that there's uh, Aboriginal partners involved in this program those are the ones from my perspective that we're really gonna be relying on what each organization can bring that ultimately you know, supports the child, supports the family. And so I think there's, there's opportunities to uh, increase that focus attention on our youth and knowing we are overrepresented in some of this work. The Child and Youth Advocacy Centre is a really important addition to any community. I think it's harder to do in smaller communities because it requires a level of resource that might not already exist within a smaller community. So Kamloops, I think, is really on the forefront of, of responding to child abuse and, and child neglect in the community. Um, and I think it's critical that we have that, that coordinated response because otherwise um, pieces get missed and children can fall through the cracks. I guess what I would hope is that the people watching this video well, I don't want them to put themselves in the shoes of, of the, the, some of the families I've worked with. I think if they can imagine what it would be like to go through something like this and know that you don't have an option. If I could wave a magic wand, it would be to ensure that children can be children and live the life they were intended to live truthfully, that there never was a need for this model in the first place. We have the people. We have a plan and we have a goal to remove unnecessary trauma from children's lives and to give them a chance to heal and grow when they've experienced something horrible that no child should ever have to endure. The only thing left that we need is your support. So visit www.bigbearcyac.ca to find out how you can be a part of this community and become a force of positive change in our region for all the children and youth that need it.